extending about 4.6 billion years ago. A major milestone in the evolution of life on Earth was passed. Stiffened by the position of additional amounts of protein and an inert polysaccharide called chitin, this large phyla in the animal kingdom has grown in numbers more than we could imagine. Arthropods The phylum Arthropoda includes about 84% of all known species of animals. Compared to humans, we are outnumbered 200 million to 1. In this commentary, join us as we venture to a world where the imperceptible become recognized. Small ones can be powerful and trivial merges to be significant. Behold how time transforms these insects and bestows them with special adaptation that allows them to rule not only in the land but from low water depths to very high altitudes from the tropics far into both north and south polar regions with bizarre adaptation ranging from a horrifying mouth parts, strength in numbers, and killer camouflage. This strangeness, almost described out of this world, undeniably plays a vital role that our planet cannot live without. In this world where humans think they dominate, witness is another realm of incredible insects. End of winter, Japan. A giant hornet queen awakes from a six month slumber. At five centimeters long, She's the largest wasp on Earth. She has only one goal, to raise an army. She constructs a nest from wood pulp and spit to lay the eggs of her prized warriors. Every one a female. Her daughters are born armed and dangerous. A stinger over six millimeters long. Jaws strong enough to dismember prey. And wings designed for precision flying. Soon, the hive is over 600 strong. The larvae scrape their mandibles along the cell walls to signal their hunger. It is time for the hornets to hunt their favorite prey, honeybees. Scouts are dispatched. One reaches a beehive and marks it with pheromones, which guide the troops. They're after the larvae and honey. But first, they must destroy the bees. This clip greatly shows the differences between hornets and bees. Not many people know the difference between them as they may look alike since they both belong to the same order of insects called Hymenoptera. A single hornet can execute 40 honeybees in a minute. They rip the grubs from the comb. But the bees rally. They have evolved their own way of dealing with unwelcome wasps. 
first. They mob the intruder. By vibrating their flight muscles, the honeybees raise the collective temperature to over 40 degrees Celsius. The bees are more heat tolerant, and the intruder is literally cooked alive. Did you know that bees can generally only sting once, while hornets can sting multiple times? This is because hornets don't die after stinging, as their stingers aren't pulled out of their bodies. Yet despite the bees' best efforts, they are no match for a hornet swarm. Within three hours, the massacre is over, and nearly 30,000 bees are dead. The hornets return to their nest with enough food to feed the entire colony, not least the growing grubs. Hornets are also beneficial as much as bees to the ecosystem, as hornets also pollinate flowers, like bees, and they control spiders and insect pests. Hornets have mastered the military attack, but other bugs have adapted in different ways to find food, even if it means getting wet. This is the diving beetle. Although it can fly, it prefers to swim. Its flat, round body helps it glide through the water like a torpedo. And a hardy exoskeleton protects it when it's on the hunt. Its back legs are covered in fine hairs and act like oars, which propel it forward. But most impressive is its ability to breathe underwater. The diving beetles are from a diverse group of aquatic beetles that make up the family Dittisidae, which literally means able to dive. The diving beetle shoves the tip of its abdomen out of the surface and pulls air into the cavity below its wings. This air bubble will act like a homemade scuba tank from which it can breathe. Once the oxygen supply is used up, the leftover gases are released. And the beetle returns to the surface for a refill. But why go through all this trouble? The answer is simple. Food. Down here, there's an all-you-can-eat buffet with little competition. And the diving beetle's favorite prey are juicy tadpoles. You can't see well at all, so the beetle simply grabs at anything that moves. Diving beetles are also called predaceous diving beetles, water beetles, and water tigers. Have you wondered why they are called predaceous? This is because the water beetle adults and larvae can voraciously feed on anything they find within their reach underwater. It slices up its meal with a scissor-like mouth and starts to devour the tadpole alive. The diving beetle is not the only one to exploit these waters. While it may rule the aquatic underworld, another bug has evolved to patrol the surface. This is the miraculous water strider. 
Like a figure skater, the water strider has mastered the art of walking on water. The tips of its legs are shaped like oars. And while the middle legs paddle, the hind legs steer. Just like the diving beetles, these water striders also have wings and live near ponds, although they are from a different species called Jarius remigius. At only a centimeter long, the water strider can move at over one meter per second. That's like an ice skater skating the length of three ice rinks in one second. Unfortunately for the water striders, their extraordinary capabilities don't extend to land. Their legs are almost useless on hard surfaces. Technically, water striders should sink as they're denser than water. Their long legs do help to distribute their body weight. But the true secret to this miracle is hidden at a microscopic level. Thousands of micro hairs cover its body and legs. And each hair is coated in a waterproof wax. These hairs trap air, which forms a bubble cushion against the surface of the water. As each leg pushes down, the air bubble pushes back, allowing the water strider to walk on water. Such miraculous legs require the utmost care, so grooming keeps its waterproof hairs in check. Many strider species can fly and have wings of various lengths. However, many species of water striders lack wings. These pond skaters are polymorphic in nature. Depending on their habitat and needs, the parent striders can choose to give wings to their young ones. But don't let its small size and delicate touch fool you. The water strider is an accomplished predator. With its front legs, it picks up the vibrations of a struggling insect. But others also prey on drowning victims. It'll have to leave this one to the fish. Competition is stiff, but there's enough to go around. With special claws, he holds his prey in position and injects a cocktail of enzymes that liquefy the moth's gut before slurping up the nutritious meal. The water strider wades to shore to prepare for its next attack. A dangerous place for some, a nursery for others. This bizarre-looking creature is actually a dragonfly in the making. It's known as a nymph and is specially adapted to live underwater, with gills in its rectum and an onboard jet propulsion system. A nymph is the immature form of some invertebrates which undergoes gradual metamorphosis or hemimetabolism before reaching its adult stage. Some species will live as nymphs for up to five years, molting 15 times as they grow. To grow into an adult, this nymph must eat as much as it can. And it's a terrifying hunter. Behind this hinge lies a shocking surprise. Dragonflies use one of three techniques to find and capture prey. Hawking, sullying, or gleaning. While nymphs will lie in wait, and when the prey moves within reach, it unfurls its labium and thrusts it forward in an instant, grabbing the unsuspecting critter with a pair of palpi. It's hard to believe that something so adapted eventually takes to the air. But not all insect larvae live in water. One lives in one of the driest places on Earth. The 40-degree African savanna is the hunting ground for a lightning-fast predator. 
The antlion looks like a creature more at home in a Star Wars film. And it's perfectly adapted to rule this sandy inferno. Tiny hairs propel it through the sand, while a waxy exoskeleton slows dehydration. The antlion doesn't need to drink water. It gets all its liquids from its prey. It's the larva of a flying insect. But it still has to develop wings, eyes, and an anus. And to grow into a full-fledged adult, the antlion must eat. Antlion larvae are capable of capturing and killing a variety of insects and other arthropods and can even subdue small spiders. But first, it sets a hunting trap. Using its abdomen, it shovels through the sand in search of the perfect spot for an ambush. The antlion gradually bores into the earth, making the pit deeper and deeper. Antlion larvae require loose soil, not necessarily but often sand. The larvae prefer dry places, protected from the rain. The steep sides are loose and unstable. Sand showers knock its victim off balance. Its sickle-shaped jaws slam shut and inject paralyzing venom to finally subdue its prey. The jaws act like a straw through which the ant lion feeds. Once the carcass is sucked dry, the empty vessel is discarded. And the antlion resets its trap, ready for the next victim. While the antlion's clever trap provides it with prey, it also offers protection from predators. Other arthropods make use of the antlion larva's trap. The larva of the Australian horsefly lives in antlion pit traps and feeds on the prey caught. And the female calcid wasp purposefully allows itself to be trapped so that it can parasitize the antlion larva. Staying out of harm's way, as an important driver in the evolution of insects and their defenses. And naturally, the most effective way of staying out of danger is not to be detected at all. Somewhere on this tree is the longest insect on the planet. The giant stick insect can grow to over 25 centimeters long. And to avoid being eaten, this dithering vegetarian has evolved an array of elaborate defenses. Her most powerful is camouflage. Sucker pads at the tips of her feet allow her to hang around, and even upside down, almost lifeless. Her exoskeleton bears a striking resemblance to bark, while her joints look like knots along a branch. Even her eyes are hard to find. The stick insect not only looks like a twig, she acts like one too, swaying in the wind. 
It's truly amazing how insects can be of any shapes and sizes, even looking like a twig and a mini tree branch. She consumes the entire leaf, leaving no half-chewed bit behind that might give away her position. Not all stick insects stay brown. Some stick insects can change color, like a chameleon, depending on the background where they are dressed. The stick insect takes camouflage so seriously that even her feces looks like a stick. But when her clever camouflage doesn't quite cut it, she has another trick up her sleeve. Wings. This sudden flush of color is designed to startle predators. But the snake isn't perturbed. So the stick insect tries one more defense. Insect tear gas. It works. The stick insect goes to extreme lengths to cling to life. And so does this bug. She's stocking up her larder with bodies. This is the thread-waisted wasp. Her large eyes provide excellent color vision and allow her to spot prey from afar. For precision flying, she hooks her wings together like Velcro and targets her prey from the air. The wasp injects venom into the caterpillar, keeping it alive but completely paralyzed. But this preserved meal is not for her. She drags the dead weight dinner back to her underground nest, where her eggs are incubating, glued onto previously incapacitated prey. This wasp can carry caterpillars that weigh up to 10 times her own weight. Her forelegs are like rakes, uncovering the entrance to her nest. With strong jaws, she pulls the plug, and the caterpillar is dragged into the darkness. The host is often numb by malaxation, a pinching or crushing of the neck by the wasp's pincer-like jaws, and paralyzed by the wasp's sting. Completely paralyzed, it will stay alive and fresh in this tomb for weeks. And when the baby wasps are born, the caterpillar will be eaten alive. A common adult thread-waisted wasp feeds on flowers, like this, whereas females will provide paralyzed caterpillars, spiders, cockroaches, and other small insects to larvae as food sources until the pupation stage. She covers her tracks. Only she will know where to find it again. While this wasp buries her victims underground, others go one step further to ensure a fresh meal for their offspring. This parasitoid wasp injects her eggs straight into the caterpillar. She lays up to a hundred eggs in one shot, deep into the caterpillar's body. The soft insides of the caterpillar incubate the eggs, and once they hatch, the larvae will eat their way out. The growing wasp larvae control the caterpillar's nervous system and appetite, forcing it to consume one and a half times more food than it normally would, until it's time to leave the host. Parasitoids can be classified in a variety of ways. They can live within their host's body as endoparasitoids or feed on it from outside as ectoparasitoids. They eat their way free and complete their transition into adulthood. 
but sadly the mutilated caterpillar will never get to complete its own metamorphosis. The praying mantid is an expert huntsman. It combines incredible speed with a set of deadly weapons. Its front legs are spring-loaded and lined with hooks and spikes used to impale its prey. Like the harsh mechanism of parasited wasps, praying mantis exhibit powerful and fast striking arms that capture prey, thanks to its special adaptation. God fearing they may sound, but mantis reliosa are an order of insects that contains over 2,400 species and about 460 genera in 33 families. We skull the name isn't about actual praying but praying for their prey. When it draws its leg up and folds them under its head, it lashes out their front spiky legs, detaining their blessed meal for that day. But the secret to the marksman's hunting success lies not only in its deadly forearms, but also in its incredibly sharp senses. Two thin antennae pick up even the faintest scent of prey. Its triangular head can turn almost full circle, giving it a supersized field of view, while five eyes allow it to detect movement up to 18 meters away. Its two larger eyes are made up of 10,000 light-sensitive structures. Essentially, each one a tiny eye with its own lens. Each tiny lens focuses light down to the optic nerve, where the full Super HD panoramic picture is created. These alien-like eyes don't have pupils. The black spots are an optical illusion. The mantid isn't just looking at you. It sees everything. With their magnificent senses, their sense of smell is strictly for pheromones only, and their sense of hearing only responds to high-pitched predators like bats. In addition, despite their 10,000 omatidia helping to sharpen their eyesight, only the favea focuses on the prey, capturing a high-resolution image. Its weapons are loaded, and its senses are sharp. It's time to hunt. With incredible strength, the praying mantid tears its prey apart. After consuming every last bit, he cleans up before heading off to find dessert. As seen in this final footage, male praying mantis is gifted with the ability to fly. But this almost perfect gift goes futile during mating season, where after the male and female mantis are done mating, the female eventually devours her partner bit by bit. The praying mantid is not the only killer patrolling the forest floor. While it may look funny, the assassin bug is more horror story than comedy. 
The bug has the ability to literally liquefy its prey. Its red color is not just for show, it's a warning to other predators. With antennae as long as its body, it seeks out its next meal. And its needle-like beak can inflict a painful sting. Distributed mostly in North America, the family Reduvidae diet includes insects bigger than them. Their proboscis enables them to stab their prey and inject venom and digestive juices, leaving only an empty dead body. Once a tasty meal has been targeted, the assassin bug grabs hold. Tiny hairs on its legs offer a vice-like grip. Once it finds a soft spot, the proboscis goes to work. Within seconds, the prey is paralyzed and its insides begin to dissolve. The proboscis pierces the victim's gut, injecting a lethal cocktail of enzymes and digestive juices. This venomous saliva destroys everything in its path, turning the cells into soup. Once the liquid meal is ready, the assassin bug slurps it all up, back through its deadly straw. Most bugs that feed this way have two separate tubes, one for injecting and one for sucking. But the assassin bug's beak acts as both syringe and siphon, which allows it to target large prey twice its own size. Horrifying as it may sound, but the assassin bug's piercing proboscis is not medically dangerous to humans but it will indeed leave a painful sensation. However, with a slim chance of fatality, this bug can transmit Chagas disease, which can cause heart failure and damage to major organs. Africa is home to many deadly animals, both large and small. This river of jaws is made up of over 50 million ants the largest ant colony in the world. These are driver ants. From the hunters and gatherers to the builders and architects, every single ant has its place in this super organized, super organism. But the largest and scariest of them all are the soldiers. Standing over three centimeters tall, they guard the colony with their life and their enormous jaws. These powerful pincers can intimidate, crush, and tear apart anything that threatens the colony. Its jaws are so strong that they will maintain a vice-like grip even if its body is removed from its head. Local tribesmen even use the ants' decapitated heads as surgical staples to close up open wounds. Another known trivia about Daraloos, or driver ants, is that they can grow 50 million strong. Their soldier ants are beneficial to Maasai ethnic groups in Kenya, not only as a staple for their flesh cut, but also for pest control, such as termites. To survive out here, the colony works together as one. They use their own bodies to build incredible structures, columns, to form the foundation for their nests, living walls to protect their queen, and even bridges up to 12 meters long to cross water. And they do all of this in the dark. 
they're all blind. Surprisingly, this unified trait of driver ants does not make them permanent homes. This column and structures are only good for 3 months or less. They communicate with pheromones, picked up with their super sensitive antennae. And the message is clear. It's time to feed. In just 24 hours, this black wave strips the life from an area as big as a football field. Up to 100,000 victims in one day. But not only the small fall prey to this deadly swarm. Driver ants will overpower birds and even weak mammals. Their victims are dismembered, transported and consumed by the masses. They leave nothing behind. Once they've eaten everything in the area, it's time to move on and find new feeding grounds. It would look horrifying, but just like any other army ants, they make the decomposition process faster, and they are good scavengers for weak and dying animals. Southern Africa may be home to some of the deadliest bugs around, but it's in the tropics that we find the true giants. An abundance of food and clever ways of avoiding predators have allowed a handful of bugs to reach incredible size, even though everyone starts off small. In this Indonesian jungle, a miracle is about to unfold right before your very eyes. This tiny egg, no bigger than a grain of rice, will give rise to one of the largest insects on the planet, the Atlas moth. But in order for him to reach gigantic proportions, he needs to eat. And for the first six weeks of his life, that is all he does. It's not long before he's too big for his own skin. His soft insides bulge and his old bodysuit pops open to allow the caterpillar to grow. His large fleshy spikes, coated in an itchy powder, help deter any hungry onlookers. Aside from these itchy defense mechanisms, they have secretions that can spray nearly 12 inches, exuding strong odor against ants and lizards. They also spray irritant secretion to threatening birds' eyes up to 20 inches away. He will shed his skin four times as he grows fatter and fatter. And nothing goes to waste. This glutton continues to binge eat until he's the size of a pork sausage. And then it's time for his makeover. The caterpillar starts to construct his own silk changing room. It's behind this silky curtain that the magic happens. While his outer skin hardens into a protective shell, the caterpillar's insides liquefy as his new body parts develop. It's a full body makeover. During the Atticus Atlas cocoon stage, their native home like Taiwan and India use the silken cocoon to make ties, shirts, and fabrics. The color of the silk ranges from tan to brown, depending on the plants eaten by the caterpillar, mostly from guava or citrus trees. One month later, it's time for the big reveal.
He pumps air and blood into his wings to expand and harden them. The wingspan extends to 30 centimeters. It truly is a mammoth moth. The ugly duckling is now a mosaic of color. And it's not just for show. The tips of the moth's wings resemble the face of a cobra. When threatened by predators, the atlas moth will imitate this deadly snake by moving his wings back and forth. Despite this elaborate and miraculous transformation, the adult atlas moth has little over a week to live. With no mouth, he is unable to feed, so all his energy goes into finding a mate. Their tragic story leaves a bittersweet taste for everyone. Despite their massive surface area, their lifespan as moths meet the opposite means of their vastness. The remaining weeks are reserved for their mates as the female moth releases a pheromone that is picked up by the male's chemoreceptors. And after everything takes place, their only destination is their death. Even the biggest of insects will have to contribute to the circle of life. And with little strength left, our mammoth moth can't escape the dangers of the jungle floor. His time is up, and he becomes an integral part of the food chain. The tropical rainforest of Central America provides the perfect cover for our next giant. Amongst the decay of leaves and the remains of fallen trees, it's the grub of a Hercules beetle. This monstrous larva already weighs as much as an apple. And he's bulking up. He's lived underground for over a year, gorging himself on rotting wood, getting bigger and bigger. Tiny hairs all over his body help him haul his bulk through the wet soil, always searching for more food. Once he's the size of a bread roll, he disappears underground to begin an incredible transformation. Hercules beetles, all in all, undergo three metamorphosis stages, also known as instars. And this humongous larvae can cover your palm, measuring up to 11 cm. Three weeks later, the bulging grub has transformed into an impressive beetle. Its new limbs are hooked with claws. Its once soft flesh is now coated in indestructible armor. Complete with a gigantic horn. This is the Hercules beetle. He's now almost 18 centimeters in length. And he's able to carry up to 850 times his own weight. That's the equivalent of a human lifting nine elephants. Yet this giant is a strict vegetarian. This rotting fruit is a delicacy. But another male also has a sweet tooth. Their gigantic horns only have one purpose, to fight each other. 
and this feast is worth defending. The winner will be the first one to flip his opponent. The challenger doesn't stand a chance against our Hercules. Victorious, our heavyweight champion returns to his feast. But the intruder will have to try his luck elsewhere. This WWE-like fight between beetles does not only happen because of food. Their cephalic and thoracic horns are also used to fight over their target female. This mating rite may look romantic at first, but Hercules beetle remain polygynandrous which means they'll have multiple partners after a successful meeting. This giant vegetarian may have size and strength on its side, but our next monster bug adds deadly venom to feast on something totally unexpected. The dark Amazon jungle is home to one of the world's scariest bugs. This is a centipede. An undulating wave of pointy clawed legs revealed this is not an insect. This species is carnivorous and venomous, but its sheer size is what sets it apart. Its last pair of extra long legs act like spiky pincers to grab anything that approaches from behind. But it's the front pair of modified legs that are lethal. Two enormous hypodermic fangs filled with paralyzing venom. Aside from this physical characteristic, fascinating facts about Chilophoda include an odd number of leg pairs. They also can be a loving mother, protecting her eggs until they hatch. And they are extremely fast thanks to their countless legs giving them more maneuverability over and around obstacles. But the centipede is dwarfed by a bigger brother. This is the giant centipede. It can grow to the length of your forearm, which allows this heavyweight to capture prey twice its own size even if it flies. When night falls in the Amazon jungle, things quickly go from tropical to terrifying. The giant centipede prepares to hunt. He's not interested in the beetles and cockroaches on the cave floor. There's a much larger meal on offer. It's pitch black, but the centipede is used to hunting in the dark. It's blind as a bat and uses its feelers to pick up the scent and movement of potential prey. The bats sense danger and take flight. But the giant centipede is waiting. He snags one out of mid-air. With the strength of a small snake, he wraps up his prey. His fangs sink in. 
quickly paralyzing the bat. The giant centipede shears off pieces of meat and devours the bat alive. It eats all the bat's flesh, doubling its own weight in the process. This fear-mongering behavior is what sets them apart from millipedes, who are known as scavengers that feed primarily on decaying organic matter. But this Amazonian giant centipede, acting a small snake, has blessed them with physical adaptations, which makes them the world's largest recorded species of centipede. Imagine a world without insects. This question seems to be insignificant without knowing how wonderful these creatures are. But after witnessing how incredible they are, these small beings are still unrecognized by how big their contribution to our planet drowning condition. In these past few days, climate change has surfaced to everyone's consciousness. Insects like them can warn us that our Earth cannot endure the abnormal changes anymore. A study says that the rapidly shifting patterns of temperature and precipitation now pose novel challenges, affecting the adaptability of insects. Insects are diversified eons ago, and anthropogenic stressors today could shake their stable ecological growth from habitat loss and climatic fluctuations. We cannot afford to lose our small companions. We should not fail to protect our pollinators, our bases of food chain, our lifeline. Because we humans may seem and look so incredible, but the true magnificent is our insects and other animals that push for our planet to become a shared habitat. Insects have proved that time transforms us to become the best version of ourselves. But not only in the morphological aspect, we humans must evolve our thinking, our mindset, that the Earth doesn't need us. It can always revitalize itself without our help. And we humans, as the highest thinking species, must do our very best to become deserving of this incredible place called Earth.